same sex attracted. Should we uh, refer to Christians as being same sex? Never, attracted? never. Okay. And, 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 and if you want to really go even further, there should be no one who calls himself a same sex attracted pastor. How come? Oh, well, pastor, non-pastor, yeah. I mean, especially yeah. pastor. Especially pastor. Yeah. That should not be <clears throat> in our, uh, it's, it's not a matter of vocabulary. It's a matter of theology and ideology. Okay, so the, let me let me play the devil's advocate. And sure. I don't like to do that often because he has enough of his own. The, uh, a, young, a young sister in your church comes to you and she mm -hmm. says, I just use that term to say, no, I feel sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. Uh, towards people of the same sex. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm just kind of using it as a bare bones descriptor. What would you yeah, say to that young I, woman? I, I would sit down and I would diagram the sentence with her and I would show her <laughs> like a, that like use, a teacher, yeah. use of the to be <laughs> verb am is um, in linguistics. It is, it is called a conjugal verb. It weds the subject I with the direct object okay. gay. Okay. So, so I would show her that even, even your pagan professor of linguistics yeah. would know that when you say that, you do not just mean you feel that. Okay. But I, I think we need to go maybe to now Romans seven and think okay. about what Paul says when he says, why do I do what I don't want to do? Mm -hmm. It is the law of sin in me. So he separates, and this is Paul the believer. Right. Let us let us be very clear. Yeah, you're you, you're ending the debate on Romans seven, right? Yeah. Now. I, well, if you think it's Paul the unbeliever, I can't. I, you know, you you got go back. Yeah. Go back. This is Paul the believer. What this recognizes is that just as in uh, in the fall in the garden, Adam's fall imputed a sin nature onto man. Okay. In justification by faith alone, God himself imputes the righteousness of Christ, the forgiveness of Christ. What that does mean is now you need to go battle your sin. It does not mean you just sit there and somehow wait for the garden to grow and you have no weeding to do. Sure. And so it, it becomes a really important thing that Paul, even Paul, I mean, he's, what is he, the holiest man, you know, like, how can I even compare myself to Paul? The Should Apostle I? Paul, right. right? Yeah. Even he says, it is not I. It is sin in me. Mm -hmm. That's indwelling sin. Mm -hmm. Another way to think of indwelling sin is to go to James 1. No one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. You are acting as though um, the regeneration of the Holy Spirit in your life means you are no longer battling an indwelling sin. Yeah. And so you are misreading um, the first 11 books of Genesis. And to add, you are now producing a vile heresy in a misreading of James 1 and Romans 1. And then you are saddling an entire generation of people with that heresy. And you wonder why we are growing in homosexuality and transgenderism in the church instead of battling it, defeating it, winning, and seeing the captives released. Mm.